Catherine, thank you for having me. Yes, and I, I was going to apologize to you for the early start, but you said you're up testing recipes early anyway. I am. I am in process of uh, creating my second book, and I have been uh, testing recipes for the past uh, four or five months. And uh, so my routine is um, from the time I get up to the time I go to sleep uh, to cook nonstop. Well, we cannot wait for your second book. Um, we are devouring your first book right now. It's been really fun getting to know you and learning about your background and everything. So I want to give a quick shout out and say hello to everybody that's live with us today. We've got Dennis, Amy, Patrick, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. And um, so Chef Amalia, you were not always a chef. You were born in Guatemala. You came to the States and got into banking and you were an executive in the banking industry. How on earth did you make a shift from bank executive to chef? I think it was meant to be uh, because when I was in banking, it was a good decision and it was a, a, a something that I, I needed to do, but I was already cooking up a storm and, and, and entertaining guests regularly on weekends, freezing meals so that when I came home from uh, my banking job, I would have something good and, and healthy uh, to eat. So that passion in me has been there for forever. Um, I think uh, that that was ignited uh, when I was growing up in, in Guatemala, living with my maternal grandmother. She was an excellent cook, a very nurturing grandmother and an, an, an entrepreneur uh, on top of that. Oh. She cooked all meals from scratch. I was seven, eight years old then. I was observing and absorbing everything she was doing, not realizing how much she was inspiring me. But that love of food and, and the culture awoke in me once I moved to the US because I miss my country so much. And why went one way to reconnect to your culture is through food. Absolutely. And for me, it was an opportunity to learn not only more about the cuisine of my own cult culture, but to learn more about the history and the traditions and, and how that cuisine came about. And that's how my book was born. That's a memory of everything, all my recollections of my time growing up in Guatemala with a loving grandmother and a loving family and uh, su surrounded by many cooks because not only my grandmother was a wonderful cook, but also my mother was a very good cook, different styles. Mm -hmm. My father had several sisters who one of which uh, was um, a very good cook as well. So I've always been surrounded by, by good cooks. Fantastic. And how old were you when you came to the States? I was a uh, young adult, uh, nearly 20 years old. So most of my schooling um, through high school was uh, in Guatemala and what I call my formative um, life that allowed me to absorb the culture that is still with me. So today I feel that I have a foot in both cultures, in the American culture and the Guatemalan culture. But I, now I've lived here longer than I have had lived there, but I still feel that very strong connection. Yeah. Well, um, so we've got all sorts of hellos screaming in uh, online uh, for those that are joining us today. And I've already got a question for you. So we're jumping ahead to the viewer questions, but Patrick has a very important question. Where can I get the best Guatemalan coffee or at least the best alternative? So he's a fan of Guatemalan coffee. 
Does he live? Do you live in uh, in Minneapolis? Um, I think he, Patrick, you're in the cities, aren't you? Patrick? You know, um, I run into Guatemalan coffee at various coffee commercial coffee places. Uh, any of the uh, coffee houses that you may already visit um, may have Guatemalan coffee, and you can request Guatemalan coffee. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have the coffees labeled by country. And if they don't, then you can ask for them. So I am talking about the Caribous of the world um, and other specialty coffee shops. But um, also there is a Guatemalan importer here living in the Twin Cities who sells his um, coffee from Guatemala, from his uh, family farm in Guatemala at the Mill City Market and it's called Cafe Palmira. And you can probably look him up uh, online and um, tell him that I referred you to him. Uh, so he's, a, he's a Guatemalan, uh, like me, an immigrant. And uh, his coffee is, uh, I should say, more, um, more pure because it's coming directly from the farm versus um, it's um, other coffees come through different uh, channels of distribution. His is coming directly from his, his family farm. Wonderful. And when I say pure, I mean the channel of distribution, not necessarily nice. relating to the coffee. Guatemalan coffee is one of the best coffees in the world. It's a world-class coffee. Sounds like Patrick knows that. Now I have to go buy myself some uh, Guatemalan coffee. So um, Lori Creever, by the way, Lori Creever, I reached out to Lori and I said, Lori, I'm looking for some inspiring guests who have made some major uh, pivots in their career. And she said that you and I have to connect and you are delightful and inspiring. And, but you're more, so the theme for today, um, Chef Amalia, I don't need to tell you about what 2020 has been like for small business owners and entrepreneurs. You are living it mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur and you also have been a mentor uh, since launching your own business 15 years ago. You've been a mentor to many other entrepreneurs, especially women entrepreneurs. And you started Women Entrepreneurs of Minnesota 14 years ago, which I have enjoyed tremendously. And so you know, the, the spirit of the talk this morning with you is is really, you know, aside from your story, which is fascinating and fun and buy her book and follow her so you can get an advanced copy of her new book, um, eat her food, cook her food. Um, but I'd like to shift gears a little bit and talk about what has 2020 been like for you in your business? Because you didn't start a, a restaurant and go work in the same kitchen all day long your passion is really around inspiring people to cook at home and share their culture and their food, um, which means live. So tell us just really briefly about your business in 2019. Mm -hmm. And then what have you had to do with what happened in 2020 with COVID and what have you done to pivot and adapt? Yes. So I've, uh, I've had a mission ever since I started my business. And that has been so important because I call that my guiding light. I stick to that in everything I do, in um, the work I do, how my uh, business is structured. It's also um, connected to my first book. It's connected to my second book. I am saying that a mission is, is so important in anyone's life. It doesn't matter if you are an individual, a, a self-made entrepreneur. Missions don't belong just in companies. Missions belong with people and with entrepreneurs because they help guide you along the way so that you don't steer away and you're not, you're not all over the place. Um, in in your in your business, so my mission has been my guiding light in in staying on course. And when the year started, I had many events planned, many contracts signed for the many months ahead. 
And I went to Mexico City at the beginning of March to complete research for my second book. And that was around the 8th of March when I returned. And guess what? The following week is when everything went crazy with COVID. And then things started changing radically for everybody. And things changed for me. Uh, everything was upside down. We didn't know what was going to happen. But I saw a trend developing um, very quickly after that. And that is people in this country are really good at pivoting, at, uh, at creating and, and getting up and, and doing things. So this trend started developing uh, in terms of what do we do now? So I started getting requests to do virtual events. So many of those contracts that I had planned, guess what? Just about every single one of them turned virtual, including some of the work that I do for boards that I serve on and, and, and nonprofits uh, that I support as well. And they came to me and they said, would you do this? Would you do that? And I have never done any of the platforms that I had used before. I didn't know that existed. Many companies also asked me to do training for their global teams. So my business went from being local and national to being global overnight. And this is the beauty of virtual presentations, virtual events. So saying yes, and then learning along the way has been a good thing. So one event led to another and another and another. And before I knew it, I had done many events. In the process, I started thinking, this is here to stay. And what a great opportunity to grow my business and have a new category, uh, a new vertical in my business. Because right now my verticals are consulting, being a spokesperson, speaker, and, and, and now doing virtual uh, gourmet experiences. So what an opportunity to launch a broadcasting, a production company. As a result of this, that is what I have done. And that has been a very good thing because I have been producing videos of different kinds for different clients. I call myself a hybrid because I am not just a speaker, and I'm not saying just a speaker, but I am a speaker. And sometimes I will do speaking connected to show and tell related to cooking, all educational. I help corporations bridge the knowledge gap and develop a broader understanding and appreciation of Latin, Latin cultural nuances through consulting, speaking, and gourmet cuisine. I've been doing this for a long, long time. That is my mission that I stick to. That is my mission that I am now sharing virtually. And I haven't done it alone. It has been a learning curve. Um, so many different platforms I've, I've tried, but something wonderful happened. My son, my 22 year old son, came to live with us uh, when um, COVID happened. He was coming to spend spring break with us. He lives in St. Louis, Missouri. He goes to Washington University um, and he was coming for a spring break. And then guess what? He got stuck with here with us. <laughs> and, and it's been a great thing because he has been a great, um, mentor for me. Believe it or not, my 22-year-old son, he is very tech savvy 
and uh, he is uh, graduating next year and he's pursuing uh, production. He's pursuing uh, film and TV. He's an actor. Oh, and wow. um, next year he's going to go live in LA. And in the meantime, he's using me and I am using him with this say that to each other to learn from each other. Nice. So he has helped me launch this production uh, company and it's been a blessing. It's been wonderful and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Ah, oh, fantastic. So if I were to pull out your, your nuggets of wisdom for small business owners and entrepreneurs, and quite frankly, for people who are full-time career ladder climbers who are just kind of frozen right now because the world is has changed for them. The earth has moved underneath them. Um, your, your biggest nuggets of, of wisdom that worked for you and you've been sharing with other entrepreneurs is first of all, stand up and, and, and get very clear again on that mission. Simon Sinek did a wonderful uh, book and TED talk on Start With Why and I help freelancers and consultants launch businesses. And we always start and continue to come back to that mission and that why. Uh, so stay centered on why do you do what you do? Why do you want to do what you want to do? And then say yes to new and scary things. You said yes. All of your revenue dried up, your live events, and then your clients said, will you do it differently? And you said yes. And you didn't know how. And I'm sure it was intimidating and you know, it's scary. I, I know as an entrepreneur myself, um, when somebody asks you to do something new, it, it's scary to charge top dollar for that if you're brand new to it. But you just have to keep coming back to that mission and your skill and your talent. They're not hiring you for all of that stuff. They're hiring you for the wisdom that you bring. And so you just said yes. And then you asked for help. And lo, lo and behold, your son was there. So that's just such wonderful advice for all of us right now. Just say yes. Um, you're going to make some mistakes. Have you had some boo-boos or hiccups along oh, the way? Yes. Oh, yes. Many, many. <laughs> if you don't make mistakes, you are not growing. Uh, making mistakes is, is part of uh, growing, getting ahead, and, and, and learning. Because if, if you're not challenging you, yourself, if you're not saying yes, to things that scare you or things that intimidate you at times, then you are not going to grow. But, you know, mistakes are part of life. It doesn't matter how old we are. We always make mistakes when we encounter, well, not, not always, but we often make mistakes when we encounter something that is we are not familiar with. And one thing that I've had to learn um, the hard way, I wish I had you in my life. I wish I joined WeMen with you when I first started my business. So I started our Bez 14 years ago and I tried to figure it all out on my own because um, I'd been in sales and I just thought, I know how to do this. I should be able to do it on my own. How silly. Um, really, it's so much easier and enjoyable and you can avoid a lot of blunders and you can bounce back faster when you have a circle of people around you who have either been there before or understand your pain and can listen and just stand you back up again and, and shoot you off in the right direction. So if you do not have a inspiring, supportive group around you of fellow entrepreneurs, fellow job seekers, get it. You need it. They need you. And the magic that happens once you start sharing and, and helping each other, it's, it's just really powerful. Um, so we've got some great questions coming in that I want to ask you, but I have one, one question for you. You are doing a lot to help other, especially women entrepreneurs right now, um, all over the world. What is, if you could only give them one message today to, because we're in a marathon right now with the pandemic and everything, what is the one thing that you really would like them to, to hold on to right now as they try to pivot and survive and thrive? I say that we all have unrealized potential, perhaps untapped potential. We have intuition. We have an inner voice that is constantly giving us ideas, that is talking to us. We all have that little light 
bulb that goes on and on and off. Listen to that. Pay attention to that. That is your, call it your soul, your, your creativity telling you, do this. This is your calling. Listen to that. Listen to that voice. But most importantly, put it into action. Yes. And follow the vision, establish a mission, even if you don't know the way. Yes. That vision, that vision, that gut is going to pull you towards where you need to go. Mm-hmm. I always say your gut is always right. It is. It is. And it's weird, you know, as a kid, we just blindly listen to our gut and say, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. And then we start to second guess it. And um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I said that that's excellent advice for everyone. Um, So let's jump to some questions. How he wants to know, which is just such a beautiful launch pad into the book that you, I don't know how much you can talk about, but Howie's question for you is this. Um, How does Guatemalan cuisine compare and contrast with other Latin American cuisine? Excellent question, Um, Kobe. um, I get that question often, um, often related to Mexican cuisine um, because most people are familiar with Mexican cuisine versus the whole gamut of Latin American cuisines, 21 countries. So I'll say that for me to be able to compare and contrast the cuisine, it has been important to first understand, fully understand my own cuisine, the cuisine where I came from that I grew up with. That is the reason I created the first book that I wrote my first book. This gave me a platform to understand the cuisine And then it gave me an opportunity to compare and contrast with other cuisines. How is my cuisine different to Mexico from the Mexican cuisine from other cuisines in the Central American region, in the South American um, area, and also in the Latin Caribbean. Guatemalan cuisine is different and similar to all Latin cuisines because we share commonalities and in and, and comparing it to all Latin cuisine, um, perhaps would be a very broad statement, but I can tell you that if I compared it to uh, Mexican cuisine or to Central American cuisine, we have a common denominator, um, which is corn and beans um, and squash. Our cuisine was built around that. So all that's, those are staples in many of the Latin countries, not just in Mexico and Central America, but very strongly in this region. But what makes each cuisine different is the native influences that are in each country. Um, in Guatemala, the influences are Mayan. And so the cuisine is very much tied to Mayan cuisine. It's very ancient. Um, and it follows those basic staples. And, and what makes it different from other cuisines is also the culture, the traditions, and what grows there locally. Guatemala, Mexico, Central America, and the rest of the Latin American region, um, they have different um, different vegetables, different fruits. Some of them are the same, but there are nuances by country. And so overall, the nuances are related to the underlying native influences that were already there. I consider that a base, right? And then everything that was put on top of that, uh, that are foreign influences in Latin America, the biggest influence is the Spanish culture 
And Brazil is not only the Spanish culture, but also the Portuguese culture. Mm -hmm. But we go from country to country and every country has different influences. Why is this important? Because all that influences the cuisines as, as cultures and influences have come to various parts of Latin America, to various countries, they have come not only to share their, their culture, but to share their cuisines, which at times they have uh, melded with the local cuisine. And so Guatemalan cuisine is, um, traditional Guatemalan cuisine today is a mixture of Mayan cuisine, the basics, the native with uh, Spanish cuisine. And then when we go to Latin America, then we have to handpick every single country and say, what are the native, um, what is the native cuisine there? And then what are the influences? How, how did that change the cuisine of today? The cuisine has, has evolved yes. in, every, in every country Absolutely. throughout the years. And when the cuisine started, they were very uh, rustic um and they were um i, I don't want to say simpler um perhaps blander right uh because there were not as many spices as as there are today those came with uh the cultural exchange through the spaniards mm -hmm. so so corn maize um one of the, gosh, we're coming up close to the half hour here. One of the things that I've so enjoyed about getting to know you and, and reading your cookbook is it's, and, and seeing what you do online, it's very clear that you just really try to make cooking touchable, accessible to everybody. You really want people to cook in their homes, break bread together. Um, and uh, my... I don't cook much, but my husband does. He's from South Africa and he loves cooking um, food from all over the world. And when he's trying to figure out what to cook from a different country, he always asks people from that country, what's your favorite dish? Because what he's discovered is their favorite dishes aren't always about taste. They're all, very often about experience. And so for instance, we've got some very good friends um, from Mexico and one of their favorite dishes to make for us is rajas. And the reason I think I should ask them this is because it's it's a family affair. So um, the grandmother is making you know the poblano peppers and together uh, with someone else, while somebody over here is making the tortillas. And so it's a it's a family affair, and everybody's cooking together, and it's just wonderful. And um, have you seen with this pandemic more families cooking together at home? And is there a way that they can tap into what you're doing? to get you piping into their homes, teaching them how to cook your cuisine. Yes, and this pandemic um, has uh, really been a major player in having families cook more at home. That is a good thing because if you start doing this on a regular basis, hopefully that will become a habit of eating more at home. So what I have seen is uh, people have been asking me to do uh, cooking classes, cooking demonstrations for various private groups, and as an opportunity to learn uh, not only about Guatemalan cuisine, but I can go in a lot of different directions. I've been fortunate that I've been to many of the uh, to most of the Latin countries and that I write about. And uh, so in every country that I visit, I make it a point of cooking with uh, people locally and, and they're not necessarily professional chefs or anyone uh, that is uh, cooking in a professional environment. I seek out the people that cook every day, healthful, homey meals, uh, because that is somewhat my style. I, I crave home style meals. Uh, this is what I practice in my home every night. So yes, I, I have been doing uh, a lot of teaching since I started my business, since I became an entrepreneur uh, by teaching at the various cooking schools in the Twin Cities. And um, I, I credit that I started forming the idea of having a business from teaching. Mm. And teaching is a good thing because yes. teaching keeps you learning all the time. 
you you want to cons you want to push yourself to to teach but you also want to learn so that you can teach better absolutely well as we wrap things up this morning a couple of final thoughts from our audience first of all um, Lori Creever just gives a shout out. So she's got a spectacular book about mentoring and she highly recommends young people and older people coming together and learning from each other. And you just are doing that with your son right now. What a beautiful uh, experience. So I encourage all of you, don't just look to your peer group, look to people that are older and younger than you, learn from each other. Um, just a flood of, of positive comments. A shout out to Washington University where your son is going to school. Janine, uh, her father was the first African-American to graduate from the School of Dentistry at Washington University. So that's a little fun fact. Yeah. Um, and as we wrap things up today, I wanna say a hearty thank you uh, to Chef Amalia. If any of you, well, some of you I know are business leaders, team leaders, reach out to her and consider doing a team building event, a virtual cooking experience to lift morale and, and, and build, rebuild that team. If you've got people working remotely, it's a beautiful thing to do together. You can find her on her website. Uh, it's in the description of this live stream, but you can find her at Amalia. Is it AmaliaLLC.com? Mm -hmm. yes. And they can find you on LinkedIn. Uh, when is your new book coming out? Um, it will be in the um, spring of next year. Okay. And we don't have a date yet. Uh, we are uh, through the uh, going through the editing uh, process, okay. and um, so we will have a date and a, a very good idea uh, in the fall. Okay. So to wrap things up, um, to those of you that are joining us from the Easter Job Transition Group, the virtual coffee date has started. Terry has posted the link. Anyone who's looking for new work, jump on that. It's inspiring. It's great. I've been, a lot of you have been bonking me on the head for quite some time to launch a public offering of my five-part job hunt series. And I finally said yes. So I'm really excited. There's a link there if you want to learn more. Uh, we're kicking off a public series starting August 3rd. So you can click that link and learn more about that. You can go to ourbez.com. Um, I would love to walk with you through your job search step-by-step. Um, but Chef Amalia, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy test kitchen and book writing and production company. Um, you've been inspiring and given us some really wonderful things to think about today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine. And thank you for having me and for your support. Yes. Have a great rest of the day.